For this art project, we're going to learn about Kuna Yala Mola art. A mola is a work of art created with fabric. The women of the Kuna Yala tribe in Panama create these to be worn attached to their clothes. Girls learn from their mothers or grandmothers at a young age how to sew molas. If you look closely, you can see the stitching because every single shape and every single color is sewn on there. It's very common for molas to be symmetrical. That means if there was an imaginary line down the middle, it would be the same on both sides. If I fold it and open it, you will see both sides are the same, just reversed. Here's an example. You can see the birds in both of these examples are symmetrical. Here's another example of donkeys. We're going to be making a paper mola. We want it to be symmetrical. That means whatever I do on one side, I do on the other. They will be a mirrored image of each other. If I fold my paper in half, I have my line of symmetry. I will be choosing two different colors for the animal that I choose to do. You will see these examples. There's turtles, there are marine life like fish, dolphin, different types of birds, and a donkey. These are animals that would commonly be seen in Panama. I will have tracers for you to choose which animal you are going to do. I'm going to demonstrate using a bird. My first step should always be to write my name on the back of the paper. Also my class code. Now what I need to do is create two birds that look exactly the same. I could do this by tracing it two times, but that might take too long. An easier way to get two birds at the same time is to fold my paper in half, lay my tracer on top, and carefully trace it. Tracing is always something that is great to practice. Take your time with it. When I am all done tracing, I'm going to carefully take my scissors, keep it closed, and start cutting along those lines. I'm going to save all of my scraps, so do not throw that away. Put it to the side, you will use it later. Notice I cut off piece by piece. I find it makes it easier to cut out the crazy shape. Now, since I folded my paper, I have two birds. Are they symmetrical right now? They are not. To be symmetrical, remember, we want to have it look like a mirrored image. That means the shapes will be reflected across the middle of the paper. So I will flip it. Okay, now my birds are symmetrical. What I see on one side, I see flipped over to the other side. To make it look like a mola, we want to use two colors for our animals. I'm going to fold my paper again, and I'm going to trace it one more time. However, I'm going to trace it, as I said, like a bubble. That means I'm not going to trace close to my, my bird. I'm going to trace a little bit further away from it, keeping an equal distance going all the way around. So I just think of it as just a bubble around my animal. Okay, I try to keep it as even as possible. Then I cut it out. Again, save those extra shapes. Do not throw them away. I can glue my first animal on top of this bubble animal and it creates a really interesting look to it. Now, a lot of times people make the mistake of trying to glue down their shapes over top of their background paper and they just get glue everywhere. Notice here I am using a scrap piece of paper to carefully add my glue and then glue it down where it should be. I can position them on my black paper. Pay attention to your line of symmetry, that's the fold in the middle. Whatever you see on one side, you want it to reflect on the other side. 
I can have fun turning these around and trying to figure out which way I like them to be. Eventually I will be using crayons and different scraps of paper to add shapes throughout my mola. You can see on this mola, the artist took their time to fill almost all of their spaces. We will do the same, even if they're just lines. So once I decide where I want my animals to be, I will attach one at a time very carefully. Notice I'm not using a lot of glue either. I just go around the edges, smooth them down. All of my scraps will be used to cut out additional shapes. Now remember, what we wanna do is also get two shapes at the same time. So I'm gonna keep my paper folded. If I took my scissors and started cutting out one shape, let's just say I wanted a small rectangle. Since I am cutting it while my paper is still folded, I'm gonna get two exactly the same. I can then figure out where I want to place them. Whatever I do on one side, I must also do on the other. I'm gonna speed it up a little bit and cut out these crazy, I call them swirly shapes. This is something I see the Kuniyala people doing a lot in their molas. I will demonstrate a little slower in just a little bit how I cut out these shapes. Now, if you are gluing very, very teeny tiny shapes like these guys, the easiest thing to do is just pick it up with your finger, swipe a little bit of glue on it, and then place it down instead of just gluing your paper. We don't want glue all over our paper. So I'm just going to add a little bit of glue, glue these guys down. I will use that little glue paper, a messy mat, whatever we want to call that little paper. It's very helpful for gluing. Okay, so for that swirly shape, right now I have two squares, I'm holding two squares. I'm just gonna cut out a tiny little rectangle right there in the middle. Okay, so just think of like the letter G. It's almost gonna look like a G so far. Okay, I cut out a little rectangle. I'm gonna turn it. Cut out another little rectangle. Take that out. Okay, now it's starting to look like a G. It looks like a seven right there. It looks like an L right there. I'm gonna wing to continue to cut more little rectangles as I am turning this. I could probably cut it one more time, or I can leave it that way. Just cut a little tiny bit. Okay, so rectangle by rectangle, you can see I have these two swirly shapes. I can play around and figure out where I want to put them. And I'm just going to use the rest of my scraps to begin filling up my mola. Okay, I like that little line there papers folded, I'm going to cut it out. It's almost like a wavy line made with paper. Since I cut it out while it was folded, I have two. Now, another swirly shape. They are tricky to do, you do not have to do them, but I just enjoy making them. I'm going to cut out along the fold. It created a diamond shape, I can put that right in the middle. And I am going to continue to add shapes until I almost have no scraps left. I'm now going to use color sticks. You could use color sticks, crayons, colored pencils. I'm gonna choose just three colors. Colors that I think would look very nice with the paper colors I already have. So I am going to stick with white, blue, and yellow. I can add these lines and dots like we see on the inside of these molas. The stitches, okay, the stitch marks. It makes it look like it was sewn on. If you look closely, you can see all of these stitches. I can zoom in a little bit so you can see that every single shape was hand sewn on here. That must have taken a very long time. 
Also, I like to make it look like mine was sewn on, even though this is just paper. I can do that by adding dotted lines to make it look like stitches. And here I am just filling in all of those spaces, just like you saw on those molas. More stitches, I think they just look fun to do. And I'm gonna keep working until I fill up all of my space. I cannot wait to see how your MOLA turns out. Have fun with this.